quick folks, this is the West Mendip Way um, I'm not videoing all of it and I won't be doing a lot really, I shouldn't do very long videos I've already got enough backlog and this one probably won't even get shown but I just bumped into three North Somerset councillors they're out inspecting the land to make sure the farmers and the farmland is being used properly apparently they do have they have been notified that of um, illegal events going on so um, they said to me oh if you if you see anything just take some photos <laughs> I say oh yeah <sighs> well I, you know the thing is I don't know I probably wouldn't I probably would but not not to hand them in exactly but they, there wouldn't be anything going on in the daytime. So anyway, I've been doing a bit of personal reflections. I've um, cut down on putting them public. I think people don't really want to know about your life, Sheila. Um, and those are, I said, yeah, but with, she says, oh, some people do. And then the other thing is, um, it is a pers this is a reflective journal and visual diary. And I do, I, I do keep it for that reason, actually. So some stuff, if I record it, I don't always share it, don't forget. So, and I, I always edit to make sure if they you know, not that I'm up to anything or I'm, you know, it's just personal thoughts and feelings, you know. And, um, that's what it's all about, my walking. I just, like I said, just met them and they were really friendly. I, they were coming through a field and they had tags around them to identify who they were. And they asked me if I'd seen any illegal activity going on. I don't know what they meant by that, but I think they were referring to raves. But, um... Anyway, I've decided to get really stuck into my family tree um, from now on more, like I used to. I'd be stuck into it. And sometimes I never used to go on Facebook hardly at all. I just, I just log in sometimes once a week. And I, I'm going to do that again. Cause if, because the thing is, a tree is suffering. I'm not, I'm getting distracted on Facebook because um, it is very informative because I belong to various groups. I follow various groups, like history groups, poetry groups, all sorts of things, and family tree groups. And, um, it, you know, some really good stuff that I, I save, you know, especially the history stuff. Um, I've just, I've joined a lot of history groups because it all ties in with family tree, you see. Oh, look at that scene. But by going on that all the time, what's happening is, it's sort of distracting me from my, from doing my tree work. I've got lots to do. So I've decided to be, I've, had, I've got to do this in a deliberate way because normally I, I, I never used to hardly go on Facebook really. I went on there just to check what, check what the kids were up to, check the weather. Or something like that. Have a look in the groups, but I, I wasn't. It didn't dominate me at the moment. It's too. It's too. Um, it's overtaken me a bit. Facebook. So, um, in order to get back on track with tree, I've got to actually make myself not go on it as much. Right. So. Christ, what on earth did we do before we had Facebook and things like that? I mean, Family Tree, it was like, you know, you went up to record offices, you had note, pencil and paper, and you wrote things down. 
You kept it in a notebook. You kept everything in a folder. Now, God, everything's displayed before you, presented. You know, and, and, and done really well. So, there we go. So that's, that's what I've got to do, folks. I've got to be strict with myself. Because I get carried away. I mean, my starts following the poetry, for example. Then I'll be... Uh, and of course, that stirs up your emotions. Which is what it plans to do, doesn't it? Poetry. It stimulates your emotional side. And sometimes it's not good for me to do that too often. Um, it makes you start thinking about... Sometimes happy thoughts, sometimes sadder things. Even though it's lovely poetry. Um, and some of the groups, they take you off. You can get into a group and they're discussing maybe some archaeology or anthropology. Or, and off you go. Off you go. And, um, you, you, and you can divert, go here, there and everywhere. Before you know it, three hours has gone by. It's time for lunch. Then the afternoon comes. You listen to the arches and the news. Then you feel tired and you sit in a chair for a nap. <laughs> you get back on the bloody computer again. Then it's time for doing the dinner. And you, feel, you think, God, I've hardly done any tree. I've got loads to do. I've still got backlog. From 2014, I haven't done yet. Have you? Yeah. I've still got graveyards. I haven't um, verified and sorted yet. Graves of ancestors. I, you know, they've all been logged and written down. Basic, basic recordings. And I've still got, of course, I've got all the video footage. And photographs but I haven't actually always uh, paired that stuff up with the actual person on the tree properly it all takes time because it's verifying the graves are really good I mean I've done a few I found over the past year I found more connections with our brook ancestors with Lamwade and the Wesleys who were farmers up there and the Isaacsons, right? We've got loads of connections. And I found some new graves. Well, I was looking for musk's gra musk graves when I was up back in Nex in the Newmarket recently. And I, I found quite a few musk graves. And I've been linking them up to Elon Musk. And I've still got some very important stuff to do with him. You know, it's just all part of the verification process. And then I got me sidelines, like David Bowie. I started a tree for him. Looking into things. I've, I've, I've helped various people out with their trees. I, I've done some really good work for people. But it's a distraction from my own tree. So, you know, I've really got a say that stop you've got lots to do walks aren't it will never be banned my walks will never be banned and neither will my reflective journals because the reflective journals can be talking about what's going on in the world I mean I just mentioned that actually now I'm here Israel is starting to smash up the Lebanon systematically attacking the Lebanese people killing people just like they did when they went into Gaza it's exactly the same Hezbollah, they're after the Hezbollah what they call terrorists so they're smashing up residential areas because they say the Hezbollah are hiding there firing rockets but they don't care about all the people they're killing you know what I mean, they, they're killing Lots and lots of people. And, um... 
So that's what's going on, and it's very distressing actually. It's very distressing. Meanwhile, you know, England carry on playing football. It's such a weird world we live in, isn't it? We go about our daily lives as people are being blown to flipping pieces. But like I've mentioned before, we're, we're disempowered. We haven't got any control over it. The, our governments have, America have, they don't have to send weapons. But we all know they've got other agendas. It's been known for years that they want the oil from the Middle East, even though we're supposed to be cutting down on fossil fuels and stuff. You know. I mean, Saudi Arabia don't even acknowledge Israel. I don't know if many people know that. Saudi Arabia do not acknowledge Israel. Now... Iran, they are extremists, I suppose. They've dedicated to it, their beliefs, and they have got an extreme government. I don't know if they really all want to be like that. Um, it's not very good for women out there, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, some people say, look, Sheila, we're fighting to protect women. Um, that's what Israel are doing. Right, over and out. I'm going to turn off. Somebody's coming. I'll talk about that later. I just mentioned a few personal reflections that sometimes I, I just do. met this past, this lovely woman with her baby. Small baby carrying in, on the front, you know, in one of those holes, those carrier things. And she had the spaniel dog with her. And uh, they both, the baby looked really happy. The girl was smiling. She's just reminding me of Georgia. And I just thought, oh, you know, look at this young girl out here enjoying the fresh air with her baby. And um, it's just a nice scene to think that people feel they can come out and feel safe. And I'm just going to take me back to Iran, where women have really not treated well. And they know it, and they're aware of the women, they're critical thinkers, a lot of them. You know, and of course Afghanistan's even worse. Do you know what I mean? America and all that lot abandoned Afghanistan, if you ask me. Those soldiers, our British soldiers, died for nothing. Because the Taliban are back in there. And they're worse than ever. I mean, the misogynists of the world would probably think it's great. You know, repressed women, come on, let's stamp on them. It goes, it's so embedded, isn't it? We do live in a bubble here. Have our freedom, freedom of... And I'm one of the lucky generation that had a free education to university level. You know, we never had to pay for our studies. It was free. I think that was a brilliant thing. I feel very privileged having been allowed to develop intellectually, which I have missed. I've missed it. And what I liked when I met this person when I was away was her brilliant mind. You know, it's uh, enlightening to meet people like that. And I don't get exposed to that very often. I'm not saying everyone's not intelligent or whatever. Uh, and uh, everyone is. It's just it's developing yourself and and being critically aware. That doesn't mean criticizing. I have to point it out. Some people get very muddled with that. It's not criticizing. It's an awareness, a consciousness of your, what's going on around you. 
to, and looking outside the box for God's sake and perhaps looking deeper in the box as well and then some people say oh we don't want to do all that Sheila we don't want all that stirred up we're happy as we are <sighs> that's why in 1984 Orwell talked about the proles who seemed to be enjoying their life having their lottery and their beer and they weren't subjected to the same regime as Winston was in that and Julia you know they were having to deal with a lot worse they weren't allowed to be themselves they were having to rewrite history erase stuff in fact erase everything about their own lives who they were but the proles no they were allowed to have their wars to believe in the ministry of truth and all that so sometimes not knowing I suppose is better and we do cut ourselves off from it I mean I like I said I haven't been exposed to someone with such a bright sharp mind like that for a long time really I, I did used to when I was a student when I I've met people of course throughout my life who are very they're pioneers and innovators really and thinkers and we need them we need these people Sometimes they think too hard though, I think, and what it is they don't get their point across. That's the problem. Some people would just turn off with someone who's very critically aware, very tuned in and, and passionate about what they believe in. I don't know how I got into this subject. Can't remember now. I talk about all sorts when I'm out. And look at that scene. There's Brent Knoll over there. Brent Knoll. Down there you've got the M5. Going down to the southwest and going up to Bristol. No, I did miss. I have, I have missed that I have become quite a hermit which just cut you off from people really I do like people though and I have got a very team spirit in many ways I really have sometimes I miss that comradeship I think you can call it But, you know, I don't want to go on about my own life, but I've had to watch my own back most of my life since my mother died 50 odd years ago. 58 years ago, and my mother died this Christmas. So I haven't had that. I never had my dad much, really. And there hadn't been anyone. And I'm not very good with relationships. <laughs> they all go wrong. Either because it's not reciprocated on my part or their part. This doesn't seem to happen. I'm destined for a solo life, I think. So I come out solo. But people think, this, I'm not sad as such. I only get sad when something doesn't work. And it was hopeful, you know, to have met a, 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 a potential friend. And it doesn't happen because usually it's because of distance. I meet people too, too far away, <laughs> and of course it can't work really, not properly, can it? You can't just sort of say, "Oh, should we meet for coffee?" Or you've had to go into this. You're excluded from it. You know, that's the problem, and you can't keep moving about. So, and I don't go out. As such to actually meet anybody I don't even know if I want to meet anyone you know it's sort of it's like that it's a one big ironic conundrum I'm in 
Right, look at that. Look at that. Let's tune in to Crook's Peak. I'll be climbing on top of that in a couple hours' time. Yeah. I'll be up there. Stuck. Let me just turn off a minute.